in the auditorium and also online listening to us. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, we bless you, we worship you, Lord. We thank you for making it possible, Father Lord, to come and hear at your feet, to come and learn. Father Lord, we pray that you send the Holy Spirit unto us to teach us that which we ought to know in the mighty name of Jesus. And every heart in heart, let the Spirit of God speak unto their heart in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So la last week we talked about uh, the Christian family. And like what my sister have just uh, talked about, you know, is, uh, you know, family, it's, it's God's, it's God's uh, project. And, uh, you know, every Christian must make sure that, you know, we make our family interesting, you know, we should work as a team. And I pray that the Almighty Lord is going to help us in the name of Jesus. So last week, you know, we talked about uh, the duties of each member's and collective responsibility of parents. So the parents have a big, big, big duty, you know, to make sure our children and also us also, you know, we come out, uh, we come out uh, the way God wants it, uh, our family wants, uh, wants it in the name of Jesus. So this morning we'll be talking about adultery and fornication. That's the topic we have. And, uh, you know, so we, we're going to have uh, many Bible verses and uh, then we'll take it from there. So, so um, the lesson text today is uh, from 1 Corinthians 6, 15 to 20. I'm going to re be reading from New Living Translation. So it says, uh, don't you realize that your bodies actually part of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. 16. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. For the scripture says, the two are united into one, but the person who is joined to God, to the Lord, is one with him, which is one, uh, one spirit with him. Run from sexual sin, no sex, no sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price so you must honor your God, you must honor God with your body. Amen. And I said, we're talking about adultery and fornication. So memory verse here is from 1 Corinthians also, 3.17. It says, if any man defines the temple of God, he shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye have? Okay. So, you know, I might just want to ask, you know, I might just want to ask the class, you know, what's, uh, what's adultery, what's fornication, just for us to, to, to take it from there, in your own words. What is adultery? What is fornication? Anyone? Okay, it's on the school. Oh. Yeah, let's just, you know, let's just uh, make inputs. We're here to learn, right? You know, it's like, 
this uh, DNA age, you know, is like it's acceptable, it's the norm, but that's why God is uh, here to teach us. Okay, man. Hallelujah. With somebody that is not the spouse, right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, fornication. Thank you. So, uh, the last introduction here says, sexual immorality is any habit or act that contradicts God's laid down plan, principle and practice concerning sexual behavior. Uh, adultery and fornication are forms of sexual immorality other form of sexual immorality are homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, bestialism, incest, incest uh, rape, masturbation, uh, masturbation uh, pornography, lust, lustful desire, and immoral thoughts. Uh, Adultery and fornication are not just sin against God. You know, we've seen here that uh, God, you know, God, uh, God said any man that defines his temple, that the, with the body we have is not ours. So anything that is done against the, against the body, God, God definitely detests, you know, is a sin against God. You know, abusing the body is a sin against God. Adultery and fornication is a sin against God, but also against one's soul. You know, apart from being sin against God, is sin against one's soul. So, who can tell the class why is it a sin against one's soul? Why is it against uh, one's soul? Let's look at First Peter. First Peter 2.11. First Peter 2.11 says, dear, dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigner to keep away from worldly desire that wage war against your very soul. Amen. As, um, you know, the Bible says here that we are temporary residents and foreigners. So we should, weigh, we should keep away from worldly desire. You know, we've seen here that adultery and fornication is considered as worldly desire. So if we know that we are temporary residents here, that then we have to, you know, we have to keep away from it. And that's, uh, and, um, and that's wage war against our soul. And also here it says, and the body, you know, we, we, we've seen where we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. So anything done to the body, it's, it's, uh, it's a sin against God. In this lesson, we shall attempt to understand the meaning and causes of adultery and fornication Consider their inherent dangers as well as antidotes and remedies. So we have uh, two outlines, description and causes, and dangers and anti antidotes. So as my sister have explained, you know, uh, adultery and fornication. So adultery can simply be described as marital infidelity. Adultery is an illicit 
sexual relationship between a married person and other person apart from his or her spouse. Also, adultery could mean sexual relationship between a married person and somebody, uh, someone, someone that is uh, betrothed or uh, engaged. So adultery is, uh, is voluntary sexual relationship between somebody that is married and, and someone that is not their spouse. Adultery and fornication are listed among the works of flesh. Uh, let's open to Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5.19 says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impure, impurity, uh, lustful desires. Then also, uh, in uh, Exodus 20, 14 says, thou shalt not commit adultery, it's part, you know, is among the Ten Commandments given to Israel, that thou shall not commit adultery. Okay, I'm just going to pause here, you know, to make it to make it engaging. So why why is um, adultery? Why is it why is it a normal? You know, why is it a normal norm now? Why is adultery and fornication, you know, just normal no? So this is practical. Yes, sir. Well, I, I won't like to use that word norm, norm, okay? Because yeah, it's common these days, but not that it's a, it's a norm, a norm, because. Um, one of the reasons why is because it, in these end times, the flesh is glorified. And so because flesh is glorified, uh, they have modernized ways of looking at things, which is not the way of, way of God. And that's what the devil is doing now. He has polluted the world, and it's even more is coming now, glorifying the flesh, telling you it's not possible, it's okay, right? just doing things that suit the flesh now because the devil is involved. And then you that is trying to stand on the right path is regarded as uh, it, um, in fact, you haven't seen that the one that is something is wrong with. So it kind of, uh, is the devil at work of the end times here. Thank you. Any other, any other addition? Any other addition? Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, just to support what our mommy said also, is um, people are kind of turning the word of God to suit them. And uh, also, it's, it's like the things we now see. For example, when you watch some TV programs and all that, it's like a normal thing. Like It's now being portrayed like it's a normal way of life when it's not supposed to be. We are supposed to be standing on the word of God. So it's the things that are going on, the things we see, the things um, sometimes also the kind of people you associate yourself with could also be part of the reasons. The Bible verse, Matthew 24, 12, just like she says, it by that because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many have waxed cold. So that's one of the end time prophecies too. Thank you. So, uh, adultery is regarded as a serious, punishable by death. You know, in, uh, in uh, Le Leviticus 2010, Le Leviticus 2010, let's look at that. Leviticus 2010. 
If a man commit if a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the man and the woman who have committed adultery must be put to death. So that's uh, you know that might be another reason why it's common. Like there is no no kind of uh, uh, you know. I remember where I grew up in the northern parts of uh, my home country. There, you know, you, they are, you know, they are, they have a, they are kind of a law that if you do this, maybe they cut off your hand and not stuff. So, and I believe maybe because the law, the law, you know, it's not that uh, tough again, and and people just, you know, do what they, you know, they feel like doing. So here it says adultery starts from the heart and the loss of the eyes. Adultery starts from the heart and the desire of the eyes. Then sexual immorality, uh, immorality or intercourse between a married couple is called fornication. Fornication has gone viral among youths, even in the church, like never before. You know, and uh, reason now because of you know maybe oh if I don't do this I'm not sociable. If uh, maybe peer group uh, pressure, these are some of the causes of uh, even fornication among among youth. And you know, just like what we studied last week, if a Christian family. You know, it's good that a family, you know, a family is brought up in, in God's way. Because once you are brought up in God's way, go through the, you know, that the word of God is the basis of the family, then, you know, uh, children in the family will be able to know wrong, uh, right from wrong. And, you know, once, uh, even if they are, they are being pressured, they're going to know that this, uh, this is the work of the enemy. Uh, then the, uh, the temptation to commit fornication or adultery is common to all, but you do not have to fall for it. The, uh, the, uh, the temptation to fall for adultery or fornication is common to all, but you do not have to fall for it. So a question here, so why why don't you have to fall for it? Why? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to fall for it before because we are children of God and it is forbidden for us to go into such uh, things. So we have to resist it even if the temptation or the urge comes. To go into such things. We have an example in the person of uh, Joseph. You know, he was tempted by the by the by Potiphar's wife to go into you know sexual sin with him, but uh, he resisted it to the extent that he had to run away and you know leave his uh, clothes in the hand of the woman. So even though it may you know. It may you know, be prevalent among unbelievers, but as children of God, we are not expected to, to do such. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the, the, the reason why I ask the question is that even in churches, right, it happens, right? And, uh, you know, I, I thank my dad for, for pointing out that Joseph, right, Joseph knows who he is. Right, and uh, that's what we just have to, you know, uh, there's a proverb that says, you know the child of who you are. So if you know you are a child of God, then once that temptation comes, then, you know, you, you, he's even saying that you don't even pray, you flee. You know, you flee, because I'm telling you, the, you know, if you don't flee, then, you know, uh, you, know you, you can be pressured. 
So that we have to know who you, we are. We have to know we are a child of God. We have to know that uh, this, we are temporary residents of this place, that this place is not our home. And anything that is done against uh, the body, that means it's a sin against God and also against our soul and body. And, and definitely it can derail, derail our, our journey or our purpose on this head. So some of the causes of adultery, you know, we're going to look at what are the causes. Well, some of the causes of adultery are untamed lustful desire, untamed lustful desire. So we talked about lust of the high. So if lustful desire is not controlled, then that will lead or might lead to adultery. Uh, James 1, 13 to 14. James 1, 13 to 14. Let's, let's look at that. James 1, 13 to 14 says, And remember, when you have been tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is, God is never tempted to do wrong. He never tempts anyone. Temptation comes from your own desire, which entices us and drags us away. So if the desire, if you have an untamed desire, then those are the causes of, uh, of, uh, of adultery or fornication. Then also conversiousness. Conversiousness, what you, you know, you want to have what is not yours. So that also can lead to adultery or fornication. Then lack of contentment or satisfaction of a party. Let, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 2 to 5. I want somebody to read 1 Corinthians 7, 2 to 5. 1 Corinthians 7, 2 to 5. If you are there. 2 to 5, right? Yes, sir. Amen. Okay, so I want to I want to open up this to the uh, to the class. So let's let's debate about that. So we're talking about causes causes of adultery. Okay. Okay. No, it's from the verse or the two to five. No, how it applies, how it causes adultery. Adultery is that if uh, uh, any part, um, any any member of the marriage, any of the parties is not well satisfied sexually, the other party can be tempted to commit adultery outside the home. So that scripture is telling us that uh, we should render unto our spouse due benevolence. In other words, you should satisfy your spouse sexually because uh, not being sexu satisfied sexually can cause the other party to, to go into adultery. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. So, you know, as a church, you know, these are practical things. You know, we, we are learning. So 
as Christians, you know, marriage, it's, once you come to marriage, you don't have a control over your body, right? You know, the man does not have control over his body, the woman does not have, and that's why where communication is necessary. You know, it's, it's, uh, so, uh, it's, it's so surprising that if in Christian families, you know, communications among couples is not, or maybe from, the, you know, where we came from, communication, it's uh, effective communication is not, it's not, it's not our strength. So we have to communicate to each other, right? We have to, so basically we just have to make ourselves Over one's body. I mean, I don't think it operates in, uh, in reality. You'll find some women, they use sex to punish their husband. Maybe they need money, the man did not give them, they will not use that, you know. So, though, though the Bible says they don't have control, but <laughs> they, they do have. <laughs> they do. And I realize that even in, uh, you know, in this climb, okay. Yeah, you can even be, you know, charged for raping your wife. If you say you want to exercise your right by saying that, oh, you don't have control over your body, I'm the one that has control over it, and you want to have your way. The woman reports, they can charge you for, rape, you know, raping your own wife. It's only where we come from that such a thing may not, uh, you know, may not be heard of. Although the law over there too, we count it as rape, but... Even the police man that will investigate will say, go away. Your husband slept with you and you are saying he, he, he raped you. Praise the Lord. So Amen. I think, you know, women especially, or it's in some cases too, men too may be guilty of this, you know. Maybe the woman is in, you know, feels like. And then you are denying the woman, maybe for one reason or the other. Even if you are hungry, I mean, the moment your wife comes to you, I mean, that should bring about, I mean, an end to any quarrel that you may have. So the woman should not use it to punish the man. Likewise, the man should not use it to punish the wife. Praise the Lord. Thank you, bro. Thanks, sir. Okay. So an another one is uh, causes of adultery. It's uh, separation, divorce, and remarry a gateway to adultery. Also, on defined relationship, we talked about that some weeks ago. If relationship is not defined, you know, you don't set boundaries, that might lead uh, to adultery or fornication. Then unnecessary prolonged courtship. Unnecessary prolonged courtship. I've had people being on the courting for like two years. You know, unnecessary prolonged courtship. That also can cause. So quickly, we're just going to look at what are the dangers and the antidote and the, and the antidotes of uh, and the antidote. So it says some of the danger inherent 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 in engaging in fornication and adultery are loss of dignity and honor. So loss of dignity and honor. Uh, quickly, can we open to Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, 32 to, th and to 33. Proverbs 6. Amen. Then also expose to expose and transfer of cause and uh, an affliction. You know that you know that the story of Reuben is an example, whereby you know being the firstborn, the father just instead of blessing him, the father cursed him for sleeping uh, with his uh, wife. Then exposure to deadly disease and unwanted pregnancies, exposure to deadly disease and unwanted uh, pregnancy. You know, I think uh, maybe, was it during pandemic and there was, there was, a, there was a study of that the, the rate of STD 
you know, skyrocketed, right? And, you know, those are the, as a result of somebody sleeping with uh, another, you know, multiple partners or somebody else that is not his wife. So, you know, that's, that can be a danger. And also, untimely death, as well as eternal destruction and separation from God. So, you know, if we don't take anything, we just, you know, that's because it's a sin against God and uh, nobody wants to be separated from God. Then also, uh, to be free from the bondage of fornication or adultery, the believer should have a conscious, consciousness of sin and the fear of God. You should have the consciousness of sin and also the fear of God. You know, and that should be the word, uh, word for all Christians. All Christians should fear God in whatever they do. And also, you should be, you know, should be awake uh, of that, okay, you know, if you go into this, that's, uh, that, that's a sin against God and against your body. Then also, abstain from all appearances or, or re, 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 resemblance of sexual immorality. So, you know, flee from every appearance of, uh, of, of sexual immorality. You know, it might, it might just start as a normal friendship, you know, you, you just take it from there, and, but you also, you know, you have to flee. You have to be able to discern that, you know, this where it's leading to. And also, uh, get married as soon as you are mature to do so. Married, married, uh, married couples should strive to, to mutual, uh, mutually satisfy each other. You know, and uh, as, as we've discussed, you know, you should make your spouse your best friend. You, you know, you, you should make your spouse the best friend and, uh, you know, uh, mutually satisfy each other when, the, when you can. Then, in, uh, in all things, guide against infiltration of strange women and strange men. So we have to watch that, you know, against, against strange women and strange men. Also mediate on the word of God and depend on the strength of the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit to exercise, exercise self-control. So in conclusion, sex before or outside marriage is totally forbidden by God. Ephesians 5, 3 says, let there be no sexual immorality or greed among you. Such sin take, take, uh, have no place among God's people. And also here it says, saints must abstain from fornication, adultery, as well as fornication kills. You know, that, that, that's what we have to take from there. It kills, it destroys, you know, and I, my prayer is that the good works the Almighty Lord is doing in every individual lives and in our family, that we will not take our hand to destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. And every appearance, you know, every works of flesh in our life, I pray that the Almighty Lord will separate us from them in the mighty name of Jesus. And the most important thing is to fear God. We should know that we are not of this world, right? And anything, you know, we can't, we can't be behaving like uh, this world. Right? And as the mommy has said, these are signs of end time. So we have, we have to be vigilant, we have to be prayerful. And I pray that as we go into this uh, service, the Almighty Lord will be with us. Uh, this week, the Almighty Lord will surprise us and our family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy the service. <laughs>